Last time I left you guys at a cliffhanger. We pulled the bolts out and we we're going to yank the head. And we're going to do that right now, but before I do that, I have to backtrack and I have to go back to the head bolts. Because as you saw, as we were unbolting the head, some of them were tight. They were the proper torque. They snapped when we, you know, you had that, that healthy when you broke them. And others were loose. So one of the important things you need to do before you go any further with this is you got to check the head bolts for stretch. Because at this point, if you find any that are bad, you toss them out and order a new set. So real quick, these are the head bolts that came from the motor. And I didn't take note of which ones were, well, this one didn't. This is from a different engine. I didn't take notes of which one were tight or which ones were loose because I'm just going to check them all. But this one here actually shows itself to be stretched. Now, you don't check stretch by checking the actual length of the bolt because there are going to be minor inconsistencies to like where the thread starts or the, you're going to find minor inconsistencies in length. The best way to do it is to check diameter. So if you take a caliper here, right, and you run it along the shank of the bolt, you want to look for a consistent thickness on the shank of the bolt. Okay, and then this is a different diameter. So, because what happens here, I'll explain in a second. Okay, this bolt is stretched. So you see, look, I come down to this point here, and the threads are engaged to about right here. But if I check the thickness here, that's consistent, that's consistent, that's consistent, and then I come up here and look at the thickness difference. And I clean this bolt on a wire wheel. So what that's telling me now is that this is the correct width, the correct diameter of this bolt, and then when you get to this point, it narrows up a little bit, which means that this bolt is stretched. The stretch could happen anywhere in a head bolt. On a bolt like this, it's more like because so much of it is engaged in the head, you're going to most likely find your variations in thickness here. But in a bolt like this that has a threaded section that's, you know, it's a small part of it is engaged and a large part of it is exposed, this is where you're going to find your stretch. And the stretch becomes, what happens is it gets shaped like an hourglass. So wherever it stretches this way, it has to take material from someplace and it takes the material from some place in this length. So if you look here, here's this one more time. There, 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 there. I'm trying to be consistent with my thumb pressure on the, on the caliper. But there's a distinct difference in diameter Okay, this bolt is stretched, you know, throw this away. If you find more than, let's say, a thousandth of an inch difference in the whole length of the bolt, it's no good. All right, now before I pull this head off, I want to notice a couple of things. We'll show you a couple of things that I noticed. And the first is that the intake ports, some of the intake ports, like this one is fairly clean, okay? This one's got some gack in it, but the intake ports, look at this one. Okay, that's oil. So this engine was burning oil. Now I don't know, if, look at this. Now I don't know if it came from a bad valve guide getting into the combustion chamber, letting oil into the combustion chamber, or bad rings. We'll get to that point in a minute. But this engine clearly was, was burning some serious oil. And the reason it ends up in the intake port, see, on the exhaust port, the heat will burn it. But on the intake port, there's some reversion. Every time the intake valve opens, there's some reversion that allows a bit of what's in the intake, in, in, the, in the combustion chamber, to head towards the, the inlet. And that's where it makes these deposits. And since there's no heat on the intake side, they stick. And that's what we got there. So we know that this engine was an oil burner. We got to figure out why. So here's another thing we want to check also. 
So you want to look for sunk valves. On an older engine, if you're dealing with something from the 50s or 60s, uh, the very early 70s before hardened valve seats, you're almost always going to find sunk exhaust valves. It's just the way it is. Depending on how sunk it is, is, is whether or not you're going to machine it and have new seats put in. On a newer engine, you don't usually find sunk valves, but in this case, we did. So when we lay a straight edge across, so this is an exhaust and this is an intake. And if you look right there, we've got, I haven't measured it, but these are, these are two intakes, these are two exhausts. And if you, you notice, it's up on this one and it's creating a big gap between this exhaust and this intake. So we know that this valve is sunk. And it's sunk by a fairly substantial amount. Now, on a hydraulic lifter, regular car engine, you're going to find those variations. And the nature of hydraulic lifters is to soak up those variations. And you probably, on something like this where the valve is sunk uh, probably 40, 50 thousandths of an inch, if you put it together, put it back together again and don't address that, you're probably not going to have a problem because, like I said, the nature of the hydraulic lifter is to take up the variations in, in valve height. But if it's a high-performance engine, that even though the lifter will take up the variation in height, it'll, the lifter will have a tendency to want to pump up and float the valves. So before I pull this thing off, here's, here's how I look at it. You're probably ahead, time and money-wise, if you're dealing with a common engine, to just replace this, just order a reman head for it. And of course, you have to check this stuff anyway on a reman head because not all reman heads are created equal. But you're probably going to be time and money ahead by just going ahead and ordering a remanufactured head. That's not always possible. It's not always practical. But in a straightforward rebuild like this, it's probably your best way to go. If you're like me and you have to literally put your hands on every single molecule inside the engine, then we'll go ahead and do it. But I'll tell you right now, if this thing has to be machined, it's going to cost me more in terms of time and money than it would if I just went to the auto parts store or, or went online and ordered a remanufactured head for it. So keep that in mind. All right, let's pop this thing off and see what we got. Used to be an original head gasket. But now how did we get all of this moisture in here? Because if this gasket was sealing correctly, none of this should be wet like it is. Nothing should have gotten in there. Which is telling me that either the deck of the block or the head is going to be warped. And before we could check it for straightness, it has to be cleaned. Just looking over the motor, I don't see any broken pistons or anything like that. Let's, uh, let's rotate this thing. The cylinder walls are glazed, but there's no ridge, like literally there's no ridge at all. And I'm not seeing any evidence of broken rings or gouging.
Okay, so right here. We've got a lot of vertical lines on this cylinder wall. There's no obvious damage to the piston, but we're only looking at the top surface of it. We don't know what the ring lands or anything like that look like. We're going to get to that. That's the next step is we're going to pop the pistons out of this. But let's look over this head real quick. So, like I said, I, I suspect that we've got a warped deck. I'm looking for any signs of burned exhaust valves. Here we've got a valve that's starting to burn. See that edge right there? Let me get a, let me get a real screwdriver. Right here, that edge is burned. That valve is no good. Even if it's not leaking now, it will. As soon as you give an imperfection to the surface of one of these valves, it means that that will burn through. So that's a goner. That right, looks pretty good. This one right here has a little bit. All right, so we're going to be ordering some exhaust valves for this engine. That one looks good. And this is our problem cylinder. This is number one. So, we're going to be ordering a couple of exhaust valves for this thing before we put it back together again. This one, you can really see where the edge of the valve is distorted. It's pulled back a little bit. Oh, I, oh here, here's another thing too. We've got some water jackets, water passages that are partially clogged. Okay, this one's completely blocked. I am going to do this head myself, but if you're doing this yourself at home, I'm telling you, you'd be, you would definitely be ahead time and money wise to just get a remanufacturer and throw it on there. So one of the things that we're going to do one of the things we're going to do with this head I'll level it out a little bit just like that, is we're going to fill each chamber with gasoline. That's so why we left the spark plugs in it. All right, so get the head leveled out and just fill each combustion chamber over the valves with gas. And now we just watch the ports. So, here we've got gas dripping out. Here's our valve that's all distorted. And we've got gas dripping out of that port. So we know that that's definitely a leaker. We got it dripping out of this intake. So 
So this is showing you which seats are going to need work. All right, well, the next step is to break this thing completely apart. And also, we get the oil pan off of here. This number one cylinder, I, I know that this is where the damage is, for sure. Now, there's, like I said, it's got a lot of lines. A lot of lines on the cylinder walls. Let me tilt this a little bit. Now I can't I can't catch my finger on any of these. They're very light scratches. So so they're more than likely to hone out. There's no deep gouges. And none of the other cylinders show any sign at all. But this one here, I will guarantee this is our problem piston. But yeah, the solar wall feels okay. Which means that these light scratches will probably hone out. And like I said, there is no, there's like zero ridge here. So, I think we're going to be okay with the block. We're going to have to clean the deck and check the straightness of the deck. And we're going to have to do the same thing with the head. Check the straightness on the, uh, the surface of the head and determine where we go from there. And uh, that's what we'll do next time. So that's it for now. I'll see you tomorrow.